everybody. This is Peggy for CropStop.com. And today I have so much stuff to show you. Let's get started right away. This is going to be one of the cards that I'm going to show you how to make. And then I'm going to show you this technique on this background. And this is all going to be using, let me reach over here. We're going to use the Claudine Helmuth paint, her studio paints. They are awesome. The coolest thing about these paints is there are 15 colors. And on her website, you can go... And out of those 15 colors, you start with the 15 original, you can get 51 different colors. And you can use these in your scrapbooking, card making, altered art. And just think about that. You buy 15 bottles of paint, and instead of buying 51 ink pads, it's a great deal. So let me show you how you can use those. We are also going to use these awesome Distress inks. There's something special about the Distress inks. They mix, they're mix; they formulated to mix especially with water, so that's why they're going to work good with this technique. We're going to use Martha Stewart's Goo Punch, and this is what she used. It can be used for all kinds of things, icicles, cake icing. Two different embossing folders. This one's in dense. You can only get this at, at Crop Stop because it's from the UK, I believe. I hope I'm telling that right. Anyway, it's in dense. It's called Swirls. And this is Tim Holtz, and I already forgot the name of it. I forgot to write it on here. But it's the one that looks like burlap. I think that's what it's called. We're going to use those. Then we're going to use some Copic markers. And then this is something I haven't used before. Ink Potion Number 9. Wait till you see what it does. And then we're going to use a little bit of Crackle Accents to give a little accent to our cards. Well, let's get started. I want to show you all this stuff. Okay, I've gone ahead and cuddle bug this because most of you out there know how to cuddle bug, so I don't need to show you that. But what I did want to show you is this indents folder. I really do like these a lot. I don't know if you can tell. Maybe turn sideways. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. It really embosses really good. So that's why that works really well for this technique. So I've already done that, so let's lay that aside. Then we're going to use the yellow pastel and the purple palette. And the way you do this, oh, I got a little hair thing there. This paint is really juicy thick. Is that right? Does that even sound right? Juicy, thick? Anyway, it's very thick. I don't. I might have too much out there, but you know, I won't waste it. So you're going to put it, I'm going to be using my craft mat. I hope you all have those. They are an awesome a, a thing to have in your tools. And then I'm just going to use a little water spritzer here, and I'm going to add water so that I can spread this out. And I'm just going to mix it up real well. I'll do this real fast. And I'm going to paint my card. And I'm going to paint all of it. There we go. And you're saying, as you're getting it in the cracks, what good is that going to do? Well, now you can see I started out with a plain old piece of white cardstock. And now I have this really awesome yellow. All right. Now, I'm going to hop over here and use my heat tool to dry that so we can press on. Well, we're just about done drying it here. The nice thing about your craft mat, you know, is you can heat on there too and dry it. All right. Let me stick this in my handy dandy little holder that Steve made me. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's an old spring out of a bed mattress. And he made it. It holds my heat gun beautifully. Okay. Okay, back to our craft here. Let's see. I've got to clean off my little paintbrush. Get some of that paint out of there real fast. There we go. And then we're going to use this beautiful purple. Purple's my favorite color. That should be enough. Oh, in case you're wondering. Oh, that's my dog. All that yellow paint that was left on the craft mat. No, I did not throw it away and wipe it off. I put it on there, and I'll make something out of that, you know, because I don't want to waste anything. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of water in here again. Now what I'm going to do is very lightly, let me bring the card in here while I'm mixing it. You see how very lightly I put that across the top of this card. And of course those colors are perfect for the fall season holiday there. And then I'm just going to brighten right over the top. Now I'm not putting a lot of pressure because I don't want a bunch of it to go down in the little crevices just a little bit. Okay. I like a lot on the sides. Alright, now i got to hit that with heat gun again, so let me go do that. Now I went ahead and dried that, and you can see it's on there pretty thick in some places and not so much others. Then I went and I got up my handy dandy little um, sanding block. Now this is a little bit rougher than the one that I used uh, before. This is more coarse. So when you're using the um, 10 second studio metal, you want the extra fine. This one's pretty coarse. And then I'm just going to sand this. And that's going to give me that distressed look. See 
want to make sure that you do dry your paint really well, otherwise it'll just gum up on you and it won't, it won't stand off. I usually have my little towel here to kind of wipe it. And you can do it a lot, you can do it a little, it's just to really give it that distressed look. I like it a little more on the edges myself. and wipe that off so we get some of that dust off of there for you. There we go. And there you are. You get your distressed look. Let me bring the card back in and show you. And what I did then is I took some and I forgot to get it out, but I could just use this one. It doesn't make a difference what color really. You can get your distressed inks and you can go right along the edges to finish that up to give it a finished look. I normally wouldn't use brown, but since that's what, or this is walnut I guess. But, you know, I make things work. I'll give you the idea how you do that. And then you finish it up like that. And then you make your card. This, in case you're wondering, the Happy Halloween and the Witch was done using my Gypsy and uh, one of the cartridges. And I welded the Gypsies from a child's first year onto the words Happy Halloween. And that's how I got that. And then here is where I used Martha Stewart's Goo punch, border punch to give me my edge. So there's the first way you can use your paints. Let me get ready and show you the second one real quick. Okay, here's your next technique. First I'm going to show you one thing I forgot to tell you we're going to use is the new Tim Holtz Rosetta uh, die and they are doing uh, pre-orders over Crop Stop so do that and then she has some of these little clock faces too so make sure this is awesome. There will be a tutorial on that coming up. What I want to show you tonight is this background and how I got all those awesome colors on there. I went ahead and I cuddle bugged my piece of paper. And it's just a regular heavy cardstock, nothing, no rhyme or reason to that. And then I just took my Copic markers and I just colored randomly all over. Now, there's what it looks like right now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the Claudian's blank canvas paint. And we'll put a little smidgen of that on our little canvas here. Spritz it with lots of water because I want this to be like a whitewash. And then you're just going to go over the top of it. Okay, now we've done that part, let's run over and dry it. Now again, I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm just going to sand it a little. We're going to start with our old paper color. And I'm going to put some on my brush here. Let's see, actually I'll do it this way. You don't want those to touch when you're doing it on your mat because it'll just turn into mud. And then instead of using water, this is where the ink potion number nine, it's an ink blending solution. Give it a couple squirts in both spots. And then we're going to start coloring. All right. Now, I'm going to hit that with a heat gun real quick. And then we're going to do one more thing. Now, there it is. I don't know if you can really tell the difference, but what it did, it, it muted the colors from our uh, Copic markers. We did the whitewash, sanded it a bit, and then highlighted it a little bit with those two distress inks. Then I'm going to come in with this Crackle Accents. Now you really aren't going to be able to see the effect of it on film tonight. It takes one to four hours to dry, but this is awesome stuff. And all you do is just put it on there. And some people like to use little brushes. I use my fingers. And it depends on how thick you put it as to how much it crackles and how long it takes to dry. And you just put it wherever you think you might like it to have that little accent. So I'll finish that up off camera just so I have a finished product. But let me bring this back in and show you. I don't know if the camera can pick up, but I put the glaze here and it's called Crackle Accents. 
and I don't know if the camera can pick up the crackles, but it just makes it look aged, which is perfect for this little flock. And then I used my sewing machine, you know, and just went around the edges. Well, that's all I can show you tonight. That's a lot of stuff. Make sure you hop over there to CropStop.com and order this stuff quick, because I know those paints are going to fly out the window. Have a great day. Bye.